was uh, studying here in London at the Royal Academy of, Dr of Dramatic Art, and I was graduating, and I was about to go uh, into rep, I think up in, I think up in Nottingham, I'm not really sure about this, but meanwhile he said he was making a movie and there was a wonderful part for me in it, uh, you know, would I like to do it? I went back and read the script and everything, it was a wonderful part, and uh, made Strangers on a Train. He would find a story, he then would take it to my mother and have her read it. And if she thought it would make a film, then he would go ahead with it. And he would then go, you know, and have a, uh, a treatment done and then the screenplay. But all the way along the line, he uh, deferred to her uh, because she was actually in the business before he was. He would then take the finished screenplay and sit in his office with um, a piece of paper, a, a pad with three rectangles on. He would then draw every single shot in the movie. Then he would get the cameraman in and show him exactly what the movie was going to look like. So when he got on the set, he said he'd already made the film. So that's why it was so great working with him, because he was able to devote all of his time to the actors. I suppose I'll have to get a gun from somewhere. Oh, no, Mrs. Cunningham. Bang, bang, bang all over the place. Blood everywhere. If he didn't like something, he would uh, very quietly come up to you and say, I think it might be better if you tried it such and such a way, you know. And you didn't, of course, it was right, you know. I can take him out in the car, and when we get to a very lonely spot, knock him on the head with a hammer, pour gasoline over him and over the car, and set the whole thing ablaze. <laughs> in this scene, uh, I am playing uh, Ruth Roman's sister. Ruth Roman was the one Folly Granger was in love with. <laughs> Robert Walker had killed Folly Granger's wife, and his wife wore glasses, rather thick glasses. Robert Walker has meanwhile wormed his way into this party to scare Folly Granger into doing the double killing and killing his father. At this point, a woman is talking to uh, Robert Walker, and he is talking about how easy it would be to kill somebody and this, that, and the other. And he says, actually, the best way is, and the most silent way is strangling them. As he puts his hands around her throat, he looks up, and I am standing behind. And he looks at me. He sees the girl he has killed in the glasses. And at this point, I am just absolutely horrified because his hands were on her throat, but he was strangling me. I think he was using her, when I look back on it, as the audience. I think he was having her go through what the audience went through. What happened? I don't know. He seemed to have fainted. What was the matter with the thing? She was just right. I think we're playing a game of some sort. The use of the music is very important because he goes back to the fairground so that the people will understand and remember that it's Robert Walker killing the girl, and that's what he's seen. <laughs> Mr. Anthony, Mr. Anthony, help, help, help! And that's why he worked very closely with uh, the uh, musical director, the composer. Already he had decided that before he shot the movie. He thought he was murdering me. But why me, and Why me? I would have loved it if he had believed in nepotism so that I could have done more pictures with him. But he only cast people if he thought they were absolutely right for the part. And I could have told him a lot of parts I would have liked to have played, but he didn't believe it, you know. <laughs> <laughs>